Hello friends, I want to talk to you again for a few minutes about the rapture. I hope you're not getting tired of me talking about it, but I keep talking about it because the rapture really is imminent. The word imminent means there are no signs of it coming. It is just going to happen. And with everything going on in the world, everything that has been going on in the world, it could happen at any minute. It could happen before I talk for the next five seconds. So that's why I keep talking about it. I, it is my prayer that every one of you be saved, that the Lord is your Savior and your Lord before the rapture occurs. The word rapture is in the Bible. The actual word itself is not. It comes from the Greek word harpazo, H-A-R-P-A-Z-O, and that occurs 14 times in the New Testament, and it means to get caught up or snatched up or carry off by force. It is in the Latin Bible. Rapturo is the original word for rapture, and the word rapturo is in the Latin Bible, but in the English Bible, it is called a rapture, or it's called a harpazo, which translated means to carry off by force or snatch up or caught up and and it's all over the Bible in there. In 1 Corinthians 15 and John chapter 14 gives us some insight about the rapture, but it is Paul's letter to those in Thessalonica that gives us the most concise and best understanding about this imminent event. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, Paul wrote, I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring him those who sleep in Christ. And that means those who those true Christians who are already dead. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. That means those who are dead and Jesus first will be raptured, and then immediately after that, those of us who are still alive will be raptured. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words from Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica, there are, there are important truths that we can know about the rapture. Matthew 24 and 25, chapters 24 and 25, gives us many signs that points to the second coming of the Lord. But the second coming of the Lord is separate from the rapture. The signs of the second coming includes all the deception, the famines, the pestilence, the earthquakes, the uh, wars, the rumors of wars, the tribulation. All of that, the Bible says, will happen before the second coming of Christ. The rapture is not the second coming. In the rapture, Christ will meet us in the air. We will go up to the air and meet him in the air. 
the second coming, he comes down to earth. The, the belief or the teaching that it could happen at any moment uh, is called the doctrine of eminency. And that means that it could happen at any moment, like right now it could happen. It is a surprise event concerning the times and the sea. Well, and Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 1 and 2, concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write to you, for you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. And he's talking about the rapture there because the second coming of Christ will not be as a thief in the night. You will know when he is coming. In Matthew 24, verse 36, he says, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. The Bible does not give us the date of the Lord's return for the rapture in verse 44 of Matthew 24 it says therefore you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect the apostle Paul emphasized the suddenness of the rapture in 1 Corinthians 15, 52. And in that verse, he said it will be in the twinkling of an eye. And a twinkling of an eye is not the same as the speed you blink your eye. A twink twinkling of an eye, I have read, refers to as rapid as the speed of light. It is much faster than the regular blinking of an eye. It will be. It will happen so fast, nobody will know what happened. And it involves believers only. John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, Jesus is addressing his disciples as believers in God and in him. <clears throat> And he said that what he was about to tell them was for believers only. He said he would soon leave to prepare for them a place in his father's house, a place prepared for believers only. And he said, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. That is verse 3 in John chapter 14. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23, he described it as those who are Christ at his coming. Therefore, those who are Christians at the time of the rapture will be raptured, not anybody else. In verse 58, he's talking about them being steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, the main part, the main passage I feel on the rapture, the most strong, strongest uh, passage on the rapture. He affirmed the fact that the rapture is for believers only by saying, by calling them brethren. Only brethren or brothers are true Christians. He had identified them in verse 14 as believers that Christ died and rose again, 
and then in verse 16, he described the deceased family members of the church of Thessalonica as the dead in Christ. There is no doubt that the rapture is exclusively for believers only. Only those who are followers of Christ, who are believers in Christ, when the rapture occurs, will be suddenly snatched up, caught up, taken away in the rapture, which means snatched up, caught up, carried away. The rapture will occur before the tribulation. I feel as soon as the rapture occurs, the world is going to fall apart. Millions of people, millions of true Christians are suddenly going to just disappear. That is going to cause turmoil all over the world like you never could imagine. All young children will be gone. Mothers and fathers of those children who are not Christians are just about going to go crazy wondering where their children are. Police all over the world are going to be overwhelmed with people reporting missing loved ones. With all the Christians gone, which the Christians is the temple for the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit is just about going to be totally gone. There will be a small remnant of the Holy Spirit left because there will be a few people saved during the tribulation period, but nothing like what will be raptured out of here at the time of the rapture. So y'all, I plead with you. Now is the time to stop the foolishness and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing, no works you can do to be saved. It was all done by Jesus at the cross of Calvary. Salvation is by grace, by faith through grace. By faith, God gives you through his grace. Listen for God's still small voice. He will call you. When he calls you, you run into his arms. He is probably calling you right now as you listen to this video. Do not ignore it. You do not know if you will be here tonight or tomorrow. Go running into his arms right now. Repent of your sins. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. All you have to do is believe, and God gives you the faith to do that. Friends, please subscribe to my channel share my videos. The world needs Jesus, and the world needs Jesus right now. I plead with you, turn to Jesus.